Hi, folks. I know I'm starting a minute early, but everyone's so eager. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Orge. I use the pronouns she, her, and I am the uh, president and CEO here at Second Harvest Food Bank. Uh, I think I've met some of you, but those who I haven't met, it's nice to meet you. Um, I started here about seven months before the pandemic, and so uh, I... Um, my chances of getting out and meeting folks were 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 challenged, but um, I really appreciate the opportunity to meet more of you now. I've been in food banking since 2001, and uh, the acceleration at which food banking and um, the work we do has changed over the past couple of years is certainly <laughs> well noted in all of the work that you've also seen. But um, I uh, have been at this is the third food bank that I've been at. I've been at a food bank. Um, I started out in Michigan and uh, then was in Colorado and now here. So I really, I really um, uh, am connected to the work of food banks, um, not just the mission, but the, the work that goes into it. I started out as a volunteer coordinator and had many different, um, different roles in, in food banks. Um, and I, I very much appreciate um, the the hard work that that you do in the mobile pantries that you that you um, partner with us on um, I'm going to be um, just sharing a little bit to start today and sh starting out by appreciating how how you're spending your your sunny I know we haven't had a lot of sunny days but we have some windows at least um, appreciation of you being out here today um, I want to ask who who came the furthest to be here today or who had to get up the earliest who do we think uh, <laughs> everybody like me <laughs> I heard maybe um, Gay's Mills might be the furthest that somebody came two hours anybody came further than two hours well it's, we have a 16 county um, service area, and uh, though we're based in Madison, um, and I think sometimes folks think of us as um, the food bank in Madison, we're based in Madison because this is where a lot of the food activity is, and uh, a, a fair amount of the programs and partners that we work with are here. So there's an efficiency level to being in Madison. But that is no, in no way how we, how we think of ourselves, even if some folks think of us that way. We can't do the work that we do. We can't accomplish the mission that we have without the partnerships that we have with all of you. And, um, you know, we, we consider you a part of Second Harvest, not apart from Second Harvest. And I want to talk a little bit about how um, we consider you a part of the Second Harvest team. And I see some of you wearing your, your Second Harvest. Um, you know, we, we have changed our logo, but we haven't changed who we are. But we've, we've evolved, and we felt that the, um, the, the change in our, in our, um, our branding is, is just a, a visual representation of how we've evolved. We haven't, we haven't changed being a food bank. We haven't really changed the core of who we are. But um, as being on our team and as being ambassadors, um, you know, you pivoted along with us. Um, you know, you probably, the terms unprecedented and pivot are probably words that you don't want to hear much anymore, but you really did pivot with us. And when we switched to uh, no contact distributions and you switched to uh, pre-boxed foods and it seemed, you know, our team here was hearing the, <laughs> there was a bit of this exhaustion of, Last week you told us this thing, and this week you told us this thing, and next week you're going to tell us something different. And can you just decide already? And I, I, I would say, last week that was true, and this week this is true, and next week something else will be true. And these all things, all these things are true. And it's not because we can't make up our mind; it's because we have different information and things are changing. When things were happening. I was calling the folks at the governor's office asking, are we essential? Are we considered essential employees? No one could tell us the information. There was just a lack of information. So I really do want to appreciate and tell, tell you right now <laughs> that things that, that we, we, were, we were working on the best information that we had available. And I really appreciate that you, you worked along with us and evolved along with us. And we, 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 
we again pivoted and pivoted and repivoted. And thanks for thanks for being there with us as we were we were um, working with the information that was the best that we had available. Um, we were aiming for safety and um, and support as as best we could. And thanks for for helping us err on the side of of the best information we had available to us. Um, now we're pivoting back, as as I've been sharing, and in our strategic plan that we will um, we will follow up um, with some information on that after this. And if you if any of you have seen that strategic plan, it's available on our website as well. And if any of you um, have heard us talk about it yet, it's fairly new. But our strategic plan is based a lot on flexibility and not having all the answers. And some strategic plans are based on having tactics built out for the next three to five years. We've learned that we don't have all the answers. We have to be flexible. If we'd had a strategic plan with really clearly laid out tactics, COVID would have thrown that up in the air and we wouldn't know. <laughs> we wouldn't know what we'd be doing now based on our strategic plan. So our strategic plan has a lot of flexibility built into it. And we don't have all the specific answers of where we're going. We're going to continue doing a lot of the same things we're doing now, adjust them, build on them, and, and learn a lot more as we go. And we've also been understanding that efficiency isn't the same as effectiveness. And we're, we're also facing that ourselves. Like pre-boxing is a lot of work, but also there's a, there's a comfort in that too. We, I'll give you an example. Just yesterday, we were talking about, about how we were going, our, our funding, certain funding options for us, um, federal funds and things, give us the opportunity to pre-box some things. And, and this is specific to Dane County, um, the specific funding we have. That funding is, is, is continuing, but it's reduced until the end, through the end of the year. We were looking at how we're going to maybe combine a couple things into a box, maybe put the, the dry goods in with the, the, the produce and how we're gonna combine those things. And we haven't decided what we're gonna do, but we're, we thought, you know, maybe we should just put more dry goods on our inventory system as case items, because if we're talking about having more choice and moving more to choice for our partner agencies, maybe we should just move that back onto inventory and just have those as case items. Because we're like we're saying, well, we're trying to encourage choice in our partners. We're trying to encourage choice in our mobile pantries. And here we are eliminating choice for par for for the for the um, the guests at our programs by by adding more items to a box. We're even we're even um, kind of in the habit in some things of of getting out of COVID, COVID habits. We are moving towards and encouraging going back to the choice model. It's really important for folks to have that choice. It's really efficient. I understand to be able to, um, to have folks come up and get a box and, and be able to move through the line really quickly. But if we went to a grocery store and we only had options for a box or a grab bag or whatever, it's going to be maybe convenient, like you're in and out of the grocery store. Um, I have some things I want to pick up at Blaine's Farm and Fleet, but I wanted to pick the I wanted to pick the exact shovel I wanted and not be like, oh, this is the you know this isn't food. I mean, this I'm I'm being a little bit <laughs> off off track here, but but I'm like, well, it's not the shovel I wanted, but I'll have to make do. I mean. Having choice in everything has a lot of dignity. And um, and if it's not the shovel I can use, it's not going to be useful to me. There's going to be waste. Food, if we give somebody, if somebody receives a box of food that, um, that has half the items they can use, there's food waste in that. It's going to take longer to go back for folks to go through and pick the items that they need for their family, but there's going to be less food waste in that. There's going to be more dignity in that. And folks, folks deserve that opportunity. I do acknowledge that that's going to take more effort. It's going to take more time, but that's what everyone was doing before this, and we need we're we're moving back to that. So I I do acknowledge that it it's it's a pivot back, and it feels like we're maybe losing something in efficiency, but it's it's important to to the folks that that are are coming to to all of our programs and it's not just mobile pantries that are making the shift and it's not just our partner agencies it's second harvest is also thinking about how how we're doing this as well so we're here to support you and and help and all of you 
are here together and you can talk to each other about how you're working through this as well. But this is really important for us to, 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 um, to, to make this shift. And as a part of Second Harvest, you know, I, I, I want to let you know, uh, um, you know, the why behind this besides just not just, you know, yes, dignity and choice, but some of the philosophies of Second Harvest, we're still a food bank, we're still distributing food. The mission, I think, I would, I would think that in all of our hearts, we know this is the right thing to do. But, you know, our vision here is to, is that everyone in our community has the nutritious, has enough nutritious food to thrive. And that, that comes from providing food now and also providing food so that folks can get towards self-sufficiency if that's, if that's the, the path that they can um, be on. Um, we believe that hunger makes everything harder and that lives can be changed with food and that there's enough food for everyone. Even if we haven't figured out how to get the food to all the places it needs to be at all the right times to the folks that need it, these are the things that we believe. The, the question of hand up versus handout comes up sometimes. And instead of thinking about it that way, that's why we've shifted it to a, everyone deserves nutritious food and hunger makes everything harder. If self-sufficiency is possible, maybe it's not possible for everyone, but if it is possible, food today is part of that path to getting to self-sufficiency. And if you look at a chart that we're, we're working on updating a chart, but there's a, the, we've, we've laid, if, federal poverty level for a family of four is about $27,000. Self-sufficiency, according to the United Way's ALICE report, which you can look up, it's capital A-L-I-C-E, um, it's Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. In Wisconsin, for a family of four, it's about $70,000. Between federal poverty level and self-sufficiency is a wide swath. To qualify for free and reduced lunch, or for free lunch for, for, for families, for their kids, it's about... $45,000. Now, these, there's, there's some subtleties to this, and then there's some additional um, uh, programs, some TFAP and other programs. But the mobile pantries are what helps folks to, in, in, that, in that middle there. And folks that may, maybe if they're closer to that 70000 they might not need help as frequently, but they might need help every now and again. And the mobile pantries, the work that all of you are doing, is what helps them regularly, sporadically, every now and again, once. They may show up in a car that they've borrowed. They may show up and they may not seem like they need help, but they might need help once. And this is the help that they get to get them through just that one time or regularly, or maybe they're picking up for their neighbor who, who needs help. I'm sharing this because I want to let you know what Second Harvest believes and how you may have seen a shift from before you had a thing that said, do you, are you under this, this level of income? We do want to make, we as a food bank, as a nonprofit, as a 501c3, we are supposed to make sure that we are serving folks who are, according to the IRS previous language, it was the infants, infants, the ill, and the needy. That's the required language. That's the required we used to say, are you below this, this level? We felt that that seemed like we weren't asking people any, like there was no barriers to food, right? Like, oh, well, they can say that they, they, they are. We don't, it doesn't matter. But we're at, if somebody's over that, when you look at that, that federal poverty level and that self-sufficiency level, anybody who's in between there who needs help just once or, and they, and again, we believe everybody deserves nutritious food. And our vision is everyone in our community has enough nutritious food to thrive. So if we believe that and we're saying, well, are you below this? And then we're like, but, but it doesn't matter. They just have to say they, they are. We're asking folks to lie 
and we're adding that stigma of of telling folks to be like it's okay if you're not just just say you are so we've switched it and so what we've actually switched it to at our mobile pantries and we don't discourage our, our partner agencies from doing this as well is if you're below that self-sufficiency level we welcome you to any of our programs to receive food support. And we believe that may, maybe there's one or two people in the world, in, in our 16 counties, that may, may not need the food or may be gaming the system or whatever terminology you may want to use for it. But we're not making the rules or the parameters or the, the, the guidelines for those few folks. None of us are here for those few folks. We're here for all the other folks here who deserve good food, who deserve to be part of our vision of everyone in our community having the food, nutritious food they need to thrive. So that's who we're focusing on. We're focusing on all the, the majority, almost everyone who comes to these to, to the, the mobile pantries that you are, are, are partnering with us on. So, and we, we don't actually have big signs saying, if you're below the self-sufficiency level, we just want it to be an open, welcoming place. And so if anyone asks what the requirements are, I think we have it somewhere on our website, but our board strongly believes this as well, that we don't want the mobile pantries to be a place where people have to show ID or to fill out any paperwork or to do anything else. Our partner agencies also are very low barrier as well, but they, all, all our partner agencies have the ability to, to have um, whatever mean, means testing, whatever they have. And if they distribute TFAP or other things, there are some requirements with that. But we aren't distributing any government commodities at any of our mobile pantries. So Second Harvest is able to say, this is our requirement. And our requirement is really, really based on now on the, are you below the self-sufficiency? And we don't actually ask that. We just say, you're here, and we believe that you have the need for food. And so, welcome. I wanted to share that because I want to be really clear about what we believe and who we are. And that's not a big shift, but I don't know if we're always really clear about what we believe. And as the CEO of Second Harvest, I wanted to share um, from my perspective who we are. And thank you for being part of this. And this might be um, the first time you're hearing it, but... I appreciate you being part of our work because you are. You're, you're part of Second Harvest. And um, if you have any questions about this, if you have any concerns, if you feel like this is going to be a, a, a leap for you, um, you might not believe exactly, exactly how I'm saying it, but we ask that you, you take that leap and... and um, move to the, uh, the, the place that we're, we're headed. And um, I haven't heard that anyone here is not committed or um, believes that people don't deserve good food. So thank you so much. And I will take questions if you have them, but um, your time is so valuable and the folks that you are supporting could not have made it through the pandemic, let alone daily life without, without the work that you're doing. So thank you for that. Does anybody have any questions for me? Yes. The um, produce boxes, so they're gonna be. <coughs> I, can, I can't, the, the, the logistics questions, I think that Laura and Megan and other folks can answer. Um, I think that there may be, I don't know if it's like a tapering off or a shifting to some things. I don't think we're like, after today, everything's changing. I think that they're going to talk about that. I think we're shifting towards um, uh, some things. We, we, we understand that there are probably some, some um, logistics and some things that we need to, to move towards, to, but there's support available to how we move towards this because um, the reason we switched to the boxes was that folks weren't available, like volunteers shifted away, you know. Other states had um, uh, National Guard help. Wisconsin was one of the few states that did not have National Guard helping if any distributions. So part of the reason we switched to 
a different model was because we knew there was a lack of volunteer help. There was a lack of folks being able to do this work and making that huge pivot. We did think of efficiency and we did compromise on, on um, guest choice. And we knew that we were doing that. And we still are, we still are doing a bit of that. We have to balance that. So we understand that this is, this is not a, a, a switch, like an overnight switch. We, I think there might be, um, but they can speak more towards what, the, what that is and how we're going to move towards that. But I just want to let you know, philosophically, the reason why we're moving to things is, is, is that. Yes. Yes. Um, second harvest is so there's a national network of food banks called Feeding America. It's a um, but there are 200 independent members of the Feeding America network. And second harvest, there are different food banks named second harvest. The national network used to be called America's Second Harvest. And so to align with the national network, some folks call themselves second harvest, second harvest. They're now the Feeding America Network, so Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin is aligned their name. But we're an independent, nonprofit, 501c3, privately funded. The, only, the, the government funding that we get is only really recent, the, um, the ARPA and CARES Act funds that we get to purchase food from farmers to, um, for Dane County funds. So any of the, um, the funds that we, we have been able to get some ARPA funds um, to buy food um, from Wisconsin producers. So we'll buy food with federal funds and make it available, but we aren't federally funded at all. We do have some reimbursement funds that help fund our food share SNAP outreach program, but we are primarily, overwhelmingly, um, our, our administrative funds are all, um, we're privately, non privately funded. <laughs> states have at some level? Every county in the United States has a Feeding America food bank that covers covers it. But they're all, they're all, it's grown up so organically in different ways. So we have 16 counties. Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin is based in Milwaukee. has like 35 counties. Um, the food bank I was at in Colorado had two counties. It's, it's grown up um, very or, organically. There's a food bank in, in Oregon that's the whole state. That, um, so it's, it's based on um, just how, how things – it's done differently. They would have said, here's the United States. Let's divide it up in, in, a, in a, a, a proportionate way. But this is just something that there were food banks here, food banks here, food banks here, and then a network – was created to stitch everything together. So, and if if that if this is really, if that thing is if that's really interesting to you, we can share more information about how that network works. Um, would anybody like us to provide that information about how that network works? Because I've written it up for our staff here, and we can we can share that. Yes. Yep. Yep. So I was at a Feeding America food bank in Michigan that, that was in um, in the in Washtenaw County and then in Colorado. But then, yeah, there there are 200 of these Feeding America food banks, and then of that, there are 60,000 pantries that are members of the food banks, the 200 food banks, and then there are also mobile pantries. Um, and one note for that: our food, our our mobile pantry network here in our in at Second Harvest. I would say is one of the stronger ones. When we, when, when the pandemic hit, so many food banks were scrambling to set up uh, mobile pantry networks, and they were, they were like, "How do you do this? What do we do?" We actually had such a strong mobile pantry network that we were just able to, to leverage it and flex it, and, and we already knew. We, I'm using we. I'm jumping into the we here. <laughs> um, you already knew what you all were doing, and we just added and 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 pivoted within the network that we had. There were so many so many states and food banks that that they had maybe one or two mobile pantries and that they ran themselves where they they just brought their own truck around. We had this robust, strong, vibrant network of mobile pantry partners that were already doing this work that we were that that it didn't it that the challenges we faced were just scale and not setting up something. And so that was a really, that was something that, um, that 
and then we were able to add some here and there or add more frequency to them. Um, I'll say that I, I should have mentioned that. That was, was my really official notes here. My dad used to do this. He used to write on the back of envelopes, so we knew never to throw any envelopes away. <laughs> I was like, oh, dad's notes are on the back of there. Um, but yeah, the, and and we didn't we didn't have any. Um, I think we had one one um, program uh, um, reduce, uh, uh, but. And that was, I think, a, a partner agency. But for for our sixteen counties, we we remained really strong relative to many other many other places. So thank you for that. Other questions? Yes, Mark. Uh, one good message: the self sufficiency model. That's mm -hmm. that's really great to hear that. And I was just wondering that Second Harvest has adopted that. Is Feeding America aligned? I mean, is is that uh, how, how does how does that play? Because Obviously, if they're not, there's a chance that you may, or Second Harvest as an organization, could be forced to take a different philosophy. I don't, I don't know. I, when we were looking at this, because we were trying to figure out, like, if we were going to be, um, if it was going to be um, allowed or not, Feeding America said, you just have to have some way of doing it, and that's that's acceptable. They, they I guess, signed off on, the, they, they said, this this is allowable. They told us that the way we were doing it was allowable, and um, we don't know if other folks are going to do it the same way, um, but they said that the, the, the way that we were doing it was tied to a specific thing, the uh, self-sufficiency model the, through ALICE, um, the Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed Report, and so they said that you are tying it to a specific thing, and so we, that, is, that is allowable. And so um, we haven't we haven't started sharing this with partner agencies that, that this is something they can do. It's not going to be allowed for TFAP because TFAP has a specific TFAP is the Emergency Food Assistance Program, the USDA Commodities Distribution, which um, is is through a different um, distribution um, model. We we don't we don't distribute that food. That's a different stream. Um, but yeah, this is um, this is something that um, that Feeding America has said that they allow us to do. So, yes. This is not a question, but it's a request. Yes. Um, you have asked the mobile food pantries to be flexible and understanding. Mm -hmm. I would ask back to yourself and some of the leadership to be understanding of the fact that each of us have selected problems at our sites. Mm -hmm. Some of us are very restricted because of the buildings that were used and that people are allowing us to use. So some of the things may not be a rubber stamp fit to everybody. So. One size does not fit all. So um, we, we um, with logistics and other things, we certainly can, can work with that. Philosophically, um, you know, we, we would love to, to have some flexibility, but logistically, um, we would love to be flexible as well. So that's something that Andy and Laura um, certainly will, will be working with. Shut up, Bill. No, no. And, and I hope I hope that I hope that you see that you know we two years ago we did not have um, team members that specifically had the job of job role of working with mobile pantries. We um, we had really strong agency reps um, like Laura who their their role was to work with agencies and mobile pantries, and we just kind of figured out well. It, Mobiles, mobiles are somewhere in there somehow. Um, and we have actually now got both Andy and Laura, their job is mobile pantry. <laughs> so that's something that we've recognized that, that mobile pantries are not, they're, they're, they're unique and they, they need, they need, you, you need dedicated resources. So, and a summit. <laughs> so, so I've taken a lot of time I will turn it back over to folks here to to continue. They gave me fifteen minutes, and but but since I'm the CEO, they're like, we can't interrupt her. No, <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it, and um, and I will leave a stack of my cards over um, on the on the welcome table over here. So if anybody has any questions and didn't have a chance to ask them that don't get answered by the end of today, certainly reach out to me. But I really appreciate everything you all do. Thanks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Megan. I use the pronoun she, her, hers. I am the programs manager here, and I'm going to kick us off with just a few housekeeping things so everyone is aware. 
First of all, we're gonna have some breaks and lunch throughout the day. The doors that you came in are open. You can feel free to go in and out of them. So after you pass the bathrooms, there is a patio outside if you'd like to go out there for lunch or whatnot. Um, the doors there will lock behind you so we can either prop them open or just give a knock or walk around. Just know that before you head out. Also, if you didn't notice when you came in, right in our lobby, we have some bathrooms. So if you